Good evening. Would you please join me in our responsive call to worship? Unseal my lips, O Lord. God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin. So that we can be made right with God through Christ. Let us worship. reading from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love. Because of your great compassion, blot out the stain of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sin. For I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. Against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You will be proved right in what you say, and your judgment against me is just. For I was born a sinner. Yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. But you desire honesty from the womb, teaching me wisdom even there. Purify me from my sins, and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Oh, give me back my joy again. You have broken me, now let me rejoice. 
Don't keep looking at my sins. Remove the stain of my guilt. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach your ways to rebels and they will return to you. Forgive me for shedding blood. O God who saves, then I will joyfully sing of your forgiveness. Unseal my lips, O Lord, that my mouth may praise you. You do not desire a sacrifice or I would offer one. You do not want a burnt offering. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart, O God. This is the word of the Lord. We have heard the words of a great king, also a great poet. We have heard David's confession and his understanding of God's mercy. And so in that same spirit, literally by that same Holy Spirit, we invite you now to join in this responsive act of confession and assurance. I will go first. And I will listen for your words, and then you will confess and receive from me God's grace. Before Almighty God, and before you, my brothers and sisters, I confess my sin, my brokenness, and my need of Christ. The ways I wound my life and the lives of others and the life of the world. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Spirit, forgive you your sin and brokenness, give you peace and assurance in your heart, and grant you time to amend your life. Amen. Before Almighty God, and before you, my brothers and sisters, I confess my sin, my brokenness, and my need of Christ, the ways I wound my life, the lives of others, and the life of the world. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Spirit, forgive all your sin and brokenness, give you peace and assurance in your heart, and grant you time to amend your life. Amen. Amen. Peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. And And also with you. Share Christ's peace with one another.
Our scripture tonight is taken from the fifth chapter of the letter we know as Paul's second correspondence with the churches in Corinth. Listen very, very carefully to what Paul says in this letter. Let your mind remember the words you just sang and the words that Allison led us to hear from Psalm 51. Let the Holy Spirit work as all of these things come together in your mind tonight. Listen for what the Spirit is saying to the church. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is working His appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to become sin itself. So that we could be made right with God through Christ. As we work together, we beg you not to accept this marvelous gift of God's kindness and then ignore it. For God says, at just the right time I heard you, on the day of salvation, I helped you. Indeed, the right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. We live in such a way that no one will stumble because of us and no one will find fault with our ministry. In everything we do, we show that we are true ministers of God. We patiently endure troubles and hardships and calamities of every kind. We've been beaten, been put in prison, faced angry mobs, worked to exhaustion, endured sleepless nights, and gone without food. We prove ourselves by our purity, our understanding, our patience, our kindness, by the Holy Spirit within us, and by our sincere love. We faithfully preach the truth. God's power is working in us. We use the weapons of righteousness in the right hand for attack and the left hand for defense. We serve God whether people honor us or despise us, whether they slander us or praise us. We are honest, but they call us imposters. We are ignored. Even though we are well known, we live close to death, but we are still alive. We have been beaten, but we have not been killed. Our hearts ache, but we always have joy. We are poor, but we give spiritual riches to others. We own nothing, and yet we have everything. The Word of the Lord. This is, of course, an Ash Wednesday service, and if you have any access to ashes at home or wherever you are, perhaps a fireplace or even just burning a sheet of paper, burning some palms from last year, that's the liturgical thing to do, or even just finding some dirt someplace underneath all the snow. This is what we would need if you are going to sign each other tonight. We will be doing that here. We also will be inviting you to come to the table. So if you would, you can hit pause now if you don't have bread and wine or grape juice available to you. We invite you to participate fully in this service, just as I'm about to invite you to participate pretty much fully in the passage from 2 Corinthians. You know, this service in 2020 
was one of the very last things that we did before we had to close our doors because of a virus that a year ago tonight, maybe the medical people knew about. Isn't that amazing? It traveled that fast. It was that virulent. I was thinking, as I was preparing for this service tonight, about the incredible experience that Jane Tuma and I had last year of having people come down the aisles placing ashes on their forehead with the biblical words, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Thanks be to God. There's some paradox in that. None of us like to be reminded of our mortality. We would much rather make our plans, wouldn't we? We would much rather look into the future months and say, on this date I expect to be here, and on this date I expect to be doing that, and by this time I expect my zinnias to be in bloom. In 2021, the zinnias may be predictable. Very little else is yet. I was talking with a friend the other night who was looking to possibly come and visit in March, and we said, well... Maybe May. There is still so much uncertainty ahead of us. But even more, there is the hundreds of thousands of deaths of people who discovered since last Ash Wednesday that they were dust, and to dust they did return. And that's just the COVID deaths. There are so many other ways that people leave this world in the span of a year. Now, lest you feel this becomes way too morbid, I'm simply making the point that we don't know what the future holds. And if we don't realize that now at the rolling of this particular annual event, we never will. 2020 has been for us the most unpredictable year any of us can remember, at least corporately. But there's this scripture. There's this scripture that Paul and Paul's missionary band wrote to remind the church in Corinth of what it was to follow Jesus, to be an ambassador of Jesus. It's not a glory road. It's not an assured thing. The zinnias may or may not even get planted because there's too much else to be done. And these are not glorious things to be done. This is not any kind of assurance of acclaim. This is not any kind of assurance of safety. This is not any kind of assurance of success, this following Jesus. It's a matter of obedience. Us to Him. He has already been obedient unto death. For us. It's a matter of honoring Christ, of following Christ above any other thing. It's a matter of putting Him first above any other passion we might have. It's a matter of walking with Him first before we make any other decision, before we make any other plan. It's a matter of remembering Christ. Remembering His presence. Remembering His power. Remembering His love. Remembering the unconditional chesed. His unconditional glory and love. Even as we look back across such a traumatic year. That's the only way I know for us to face what lies ahead. We don't know what the future will bring in this year. We would like to think we will be through a pandemic. Wouldn't it be great? Tonight is our first opportunity to have live people back in the sanctuary. 
Though you're not seeing that service right now, it will be happening. Isn't that amazing? And yet, a year ago tonight, we would have said, what? What are you talking about? Of course we gather every chance we get. We don't know. But we do know, we do know that we are called to be different. We are called to live differently, you and I. We are called to proclaim something other than I belong to the Republican Party or the Democratic Party. We are called to proclaim something other than I'm a male or I'm a female or I'm somewhere in between. We are called to proclaim something more than I live in River Forest or Forest Park or Oak Park or Elmwood Park or Wheaton or Willowbrook. We are called to proclaim that we belong to Jesus. Whoever else we may be, we are a disciple of His. Whatever else we may be, we are an ambassador of His. Why ever else we may be existing in this world, it is to follow Him and to proclaim Him and to share Him. Whenever else we may know God's presence, we know it now. Because however far through this pandemic we are, Christ is with us right now. And He's not terribly impressed with the death count because He knows that living or dying, we are His. He's not terribly impressed with any sacrifices that we have made because He knows there's always more we could be doing for Him. For the Gospel, not for ourselves. But He also, He also is the one that welcomes you as you metaphorically or realistically come down this aisle and receive a mark on your forehead and hear the words, you are dust with holy ruach keeping you moving. And to dust someday your body will return, but thanks be to God, not your soul, not your life, not really. He is the one that invites you, whether virtually or actually, to this table to receive bread and to receive a little bit of wine and to remember that this is His body broken for us. This is His blood shed for us. This is Him who became sin that we could know His righteousness. That we could know His life. That you and I, in the face of a pandemic, do not need to fear. In the face of failure in our jobs, in the face of failure in our relationships, in the face of failure with our kids or our parents, in the face of failure of any kind, we have not failed in the eyes of Christ. We have not failed in the heart of God. We are His beloved whether we are ignored or praised, whether we are listened to or marginalized, whether we are beaten or whether we return to the safety of our homes every night, we are His. That is the story of Ash Wednesday so that we aren't terribly impressed with our little selves and our little human thoughts and our little human accomplishments because you know what? A hundred years from now, no one is going to remember a single person who's alive right now listening to my words, myself included. But if we live as we are called to live, if we be who we are called to be, if we use the breath that God gives us right now, in the time that we have left, whether it's long or short, if we do those things a hundred years from now, somebody is going to remember Jesus because of you. 
And that is very good news. Friends, in Christ, every year at the time of the Christian Passover, we celebrate our redemption through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lent is a time to prepare for this celebration and to renew our life in this Paschal mystery. We have begun tonight by acknowledging our need for repentance and for the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our journey to Easter begins with the sign of ashes. The ancient sign speaks of the frailty and the uncertainty of human life and marks the penitence of this community. I invite you therefore in the name of Christ to observe a Holy Lent by self-examination and penitence, by prayer and fasting, by works of love, and by reading and meditating on the Word of God. If you wish to participate in the 
what's called the imposition of ashes, then I would invite you that you can do that now as Allison and I share this. All you do, this is a little ministerial secret, all you do is you get something that makes a mark. You take your finger and you make a small cross on the forehead of the person that you are with. And you say to him or her, Allison, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Paul, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And now we invite you to come to the table of the Lord. This is not a Presbyterian table. This is not a first press table. This is the table of our loving Heavenly Father, of our Savior. And He invites you not to walk, but to run to His mercy. He invites you no matter who you are, no matter where you've been, no matter what you have done, no matter whom you have done it with or to, no matter if you receive Him as your Savior, if you believe in your heart that He is your Lord, come, come. He invites you. He begs you to know His mercy and to know His love. Will you pray with me? Oh Lord God, we do thank You for this invitation we bless you and we thank you for creating the whole world and for all of your promises to your people and for Jesus Christ in whom your fullness dwells, the one born of Mary who shares our life. Eating with sinners, he welcomes us. Guiding his children, he leads us. Visiting the sick, he heals us. Dying on the cross, he saves us. And risen from the dead, he gives us new life. Living with you, O oh God, he prays for us. So it is with thanksgiving that we take this bread and this cup and we proclaim the death and resurrection of our Lord. And we acknowledge this night our sin, our own death, our need for your risen life. Receive this, our sacrifice of praise, and pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that this meal might be a communion in the body and blood of our Lord. Make us one with Christ and with all who share this feast. Unite us in faith, encourage us with hope, inspire us to love. O oh God, make us passionate for you first, that we might serve as your faithful disciples until we feast at your table in glory. And we praise you, eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your way, word made flesh. Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, he took bread. And after he had given thanks to God, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, his friends. And he said to them, take and eat, for this is my body given for you. In the same way, he took the cup. And he said to his friends, this cup is a new covenant. A new covenant which is sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we do so in remembrance of him. And we proclaim his name until the day of his return. Amen. Paul? the body and blood of Christ given for you. You are loved. Thanks be to God. Allison, the body and the blood of Christ given for you. You are loved.
as our Savior Christ has taught us. We are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the promise that God has given us. Jesus said, I will be with you day after day after day, right up to the end of the age. Jesus has said, I have come that you may have life and have it in abundance. These are the promises of Christ. May we now sing of our promise, our part of that covenant relationship, that we will serve him, that we will walk with him, that we will live Him for him and proclaim him from this day on. Tonight, we begin the observance of the holiest season in the church year because this calls on us to be different. This calls on us during these six weeks to practice our difference in Jesus, to remember that we are dust, to remember his immense love for us. And so, as you move into the darkness of this night, may it be with the light, the love, and the joy of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And may we together serve Him to the end, as we have promised to our Master and our friend. God bless you. Thank mm-hmm. you.